Okay, I'm back here. I'm trying to get my Lagrange points cranked out. I've done L1, I've done L2, I'm gonna do L3. So, what is a Lagrange point? If I have two objects that are orbiting a common center of mass, it is possible to put an object at different locations. Here's one right here, I could put it right here, such that the angular velocity of an object here is the same as the angular velocity of these orbiting. And what that means is that it will stay in the same position relative to these two, two things. So they all rotate together. Uh, this is the L3 Lagrange point. Uh, in this, I'm assuming that M1 is a massive star uh, or planet, and then M2 is much lower mass, uh, and I want to find the location of that. So the first thing I have is that um, if I'm setting up this up as though I want for a generic case, and my generic case has mass M1 and M2 separate buried by distance of R. If I do that, I want them to rotate about a common center of mass. I have a video down in the playlist here um, and where I can I go through this derivation of where these two masses would be. That's pretty easy. And then what would their velocities be in order to make sure they're in, in the same orbit around that same point. And so you can model these two. I'm going to add another mass right here that's very low, which means it does not change the motion of these two. And that's the point L3. So let's calculate where that would be, and we'll call this distance from the point of rotation R L3. It's a, and it's a scalar value. So the first thing is I'm going to have two gravitational forces acting on this. I'm going to have the gravitational force due to M1 and a gravitational force due to M2. Now, this has a mass, but I'm going to divide every side of everything divided by that mass. So I'm really looking at the accelerations due to these two. So let's first find this one. It's going to be uh, gravitational force and the acceleration. It's going to be G times mass 1 divided by this distance squared. So this to this is R1, here to here is RL3, so it's going to be the difference in those. So it's going to be RL3 minus R1 quantity squared, and then that's my gravitational force. Of course, uh, the, gravi the magnitude of a gravitational force is GM1M2 over R squared, right? where R is the distance between those two objects. Okay, so that's this acceleration. This is an acceleration because I didn't include that mass right there. Now what about this one? So it's going to be also pulling that way. So I'm going to say plus uh, g m2 over what's this distance? This here to here is r2, here to here is rl3. So this is going to be rl3 plus r2 squared. And that is going to be equal to uh, the mass times acceleration, or just acceleration because I divided by the mass. And so the acceleration of something moving in a circle is AC equals omega squared R, where that's the angular velocity and that's the radius of the circle that it is moving in. So I know R is going to be this RL3. That's how far of a circle it's moving in. And omega is the same angular velocity as the other ones. So here is the angular velocity for mass 2. Uh, it's the velocity of mass 2 divided by the radius of mass 2, the circular radius of mass 2. So I get this. So if I put this in, i got to square this. So it's going to be g m2 over r squared, big R squared, r1. And then I have to multiply that by r l three. I think that's right. Yeah. Okay. So that's my equation. And I would like to solve this for RL3. But you see, I have here an RL3 squared in the denominator. I have multiple terms in the denominator if I, if I multiply this out. And same thing over here. Uh, that's a three. And then I have RL3 here. So it's, it's a complicated enough equation. So the way I'm going to do this is to calculate this stuff, left-hand side, right-hand side. And I'm going to start at uh, RL3 equals R1. If I do that, I can't because that would be infinite. So let's say R1 a little bit, so 1.005. I'm just picking a number times R1. 
That's where I'm going to start that at. And then I'm going to calculate the value on the left-hand side. I'm going to calculate the value on the right-hand side. And <clears throat> then I want to keep increasing the value of L3 until these two sides are equal. And in fact, what I'm going to do is do it until this side. Let's see, this side is going to start off uh, very, very large. Yeah, so this side will be more positive than that side. Um, yeah, it has to be. Yeah. So I'm going to start, and I'm going to keep increasing RL3 until this side is less than that. At that point, I can find my, my value. So I need to do that in Python. So let's switch over to the computer, and let's crank this thing out, and then we can test it and see if it works. <clears throat> okay, so here is some code from another... Uh, program. And what I have here, let's see, L3 test. Um, let's just run this because there's nothing there. It's save. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so uh, I have some masses and the R1, R2 and all that stuff. Uh, and then I, I was going to plot this thing, but I don't want to do that. I just want to do it the same way I've done before. Uh, so in that case, I'm going to just find the value here, and then I'm going to um, I'm going to turn it into a function. I'm, I'm thinking about just turning it into a function right from the beginning, because I think I can do that. Okay, let's do that. Let's just let's just do that up here. So this is my uh, I already have a function for um, is this it? No, that's not it. New Lagrange point. Okay, let's see. Where is my function? Lagrange point test. New Lagrange point. Calc L2 function. L2, L1. Okay, this is the one I want. So this is L2. Let's change this to uh, L2, L2, L1, L3. So I already have a function for uh, these things, and I'm just going to see if I can modify it. So I'm going to copy that. That's my L1 function. And now I'm going to make a new function, which looks the same. And I'm going to call it L3. So L3 inputs uh, mass 1, mass 2, the separation between them, and the maximum number of iterations. So the way I calculate this is to uh, plot or calculate the left and the right-hand side until they cross. And then I'm going to go back one step and then decrease the step size and do it again. And so I'm going to do that in max number of times so that, because what happens is I have a very, very large range I'm looking for the values for. And so once I cross it over, I kind of narrow down where I can look and I start making smaller and smaller step sizes to get a better and better value. Okay, so G, R1, R2, all that's the same. R start, this is for L3. R start, I want to start, it's going to be on the other side of R1. Oh, yeah. So I think that's okay. Point one, no, I want point. I want it greater than than R1. So let's say R1 times uh, 1.001. Right. So it's not going to be an infinite force right away. I'm going to move further away. It will be hard, huge though. Uh, and then that's fine. Dr is fine. L. I'm going to this will be L3. Right-hand side, now I need to look at my equation. Right-hand side is uh, G, M1, R, L3. It's the same thing. Right. The left-hand side is going to be R, L3 minus R1. And then plus R, L3. L3 plus R2. And then I just need to do that exact same calculation again. So let's just copy this. And then that needs to be indented. And then if, when do I, what should I do to break it? So if it's, if it's, as far as R2, it could be greater than that. So let's say if it's 
greater than 2 times R2. That's really far away. It, you should not have a Lagrange point that way. And this is just to make sure if I make a mistake uh, and they never actually cross, then I end. I don't go in an infinite loop. Uh, then I need to increase my step size. And then this, so this right here, this part finds where they cross over. And then I start over and I make a smaller step size. So I need to push my start back to my old position and do that again and then return L3. Uh, so let's go down here and let's just try it. Print L3 equals L3. And yes, there are better ways of solving these equations, okay? But I like to do them my way. I like to do them the way that I come up with. I don't want to just look up some other way to do it and just move on with that. Uh, M1, M2, R. I, I, let's just go with 5 first and let's see if that works. Okay, so save it. I'm kind of scared. Inconsistent indentation in line 132. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so dent tab. Okay. Okay, there's my L3. Um, you'll notice here, I know that the distance between the two points is 1.5 times 10 to the 11. So this is just a little bit greater than that. But let's take this number. Oh, let's make it, let's go to, let's increase this to 7. See if that changes. Six, seven, four, seven, six, two. Yeah, it did. Let's do eight. Okay, I think that's good enough. I'm gonna take this value over here. And let's go back to this, not that program, because I don't want to use that. Um, my point test ground. So this is where I can, all I do is have a mass and I can put it wherever I want with some initial velocity and let it go. So I already have my two stars are orbiting and they're the same values that I have in my calculation, so that's good. Uh, so all I wanna do is put this for RT right there. Okay, so now in this case I have, um, I actually wanna put this as a negative, right, cause it's, in the, it's on the other side of mass one. Um, I'm trying to think about the velocity. So I have it going this, so it should be positive, but the ball's position is gonna be negative. So I think that should work. So let's run this and see what happens. Okay. So, I mean, this is what we would expect, right? If this mass is much greater than that mass, it, I don't really need to move it at a different location. L3 is just going to be the opposite side of that planet. There is a gravitational force from this star pulling on that one, but it, it just doesn't really do very much. It's very far away. This one does a lot more. Um, so, but it, since it does pull more, I think it's actually in a little bit closer. Wouldn't it be? Yeah, it'd be a little bit closer. But the thing is, the way I've built this, I can change the values of my distances between stars and my masses and, and rerun it. And I'm going to do that. But I want to first find L4 and L5, and that's what's going to be in my next video, so I'll see you there. The code for this will be down below. I'm working my way through it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to make them all. It's going to be great. I'm stopping.